Well, hello, I love those wonderful mornings where you can have something delicious ready to go, like a coffee cake. And coffee cake, let's be honest, it's pretty much a cake that masquerades as something we have for breakfast. It's a great excuse to have. And my grandma always made an amazing bunt coffee cake. The one caveat of was, it was from the 90s. You know those recipes from the 90s that used boxed mixes? So it had a box yellow cake mix in it. And while it was delicious, everyone loves it. It's like the go-to coffee cake, especially for the kids in our lives. I've decided to slightly update it and give it more of a homemade, but same taste, same nostalgia, really same ease because a box cakes mix goes with things that you usually have in your pantry that are ready to go. And that's the best part. And I know grandma would have loved this just as much. So we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. We're gonna put them right in here. Now this is kind of a reverse method for doing a cake. And it's how I like to do a lot of my cakes because I think it makes a more moist cake and a more delicious cake. So it's pretty much a simple yellow cake to start with. We're gonna start with two cups of flour and we're gonna put that, you know how I like to do my flour. We like to scoop it with a scoop because that kind of self sifts it and it helps us not pack in too much flour. So as we do it, we're just kind of lightly doing the flour and then just leveling it off the top and putting it right into our mixer after the flour. Since I like to just keep all purpose on hand, I'm gonna add some cornstarch. So what cornstarch does is it makes pretty much all purpose flour into like a cake flour. It lightens it. So flours have different protein rates and that's what makes them cake flour, bread flour, all those different things. And so if you put in some of this cornstarch with the all purpose, it lightens the overall flour and makes it just a better, lighter kind of cake light -like texture. And that's what you want. Next we're gonna put in, that was a quarter cup of cornstarch, and now we're gonna put in one and a half cups of sugar. So this is really simple as you can tell. It's kind of the ingredients you're just gonna have around and that's what I love about it. So to finish off our dry ingredients, because this isn't quite all of them, we need some little bit more oomph. We need some leavening. So that's gonna come in the form of baking powder. Baking powder in general, we're gonna do two and a half teaspoons. We all know what baking powder does. It really helps lighten aerate and actually just kind of rise the cake. And that's what we want. So we're gonna put in two and a half teaspoons and we're gonna put in just a half a teaspoon of salt. Just kind of balance out all the flavors. It really helps magnify the flavors. We're gonna put that right in there and we're just gonna mix this on low. We wanna incorporate it. We wanna get it all together. And while that's mixing, this is the reverse creamy method I'm talking about. We're gonna add in one stick, eight tablespoons, of unsalted butter. I've let it sit out somewhat at room temperature, and we're just gonna put them in tablespoon by tablespoon and let them kind of work in like we would a pastry. It's gonna get crumbly, kind of dry looking, kind of maybe like a coarse sandy texture, and then we'll be done. So you can see the butter's really starting to break down. It's about the size of small kind of large peas or smaller. And while that's still kind of finishing up, I'm gonna add in some oil. So what vegetable oil does, and you know this if you have ever had it, is just a half a cup here. It really keeps the moistness of a cake. So when you have a box recipe, whether it's a brownie, whether it's a cake, there's always almost oil in it because that oil, while it doesn't have a lot of flavor, it has an awesome ability to really hold in the moisture and always make it just deliciously moist. And that's what you want. So I'm gonna just work that oil now into the flour. And what that's doing is just making sure the flour is evenly coating all the fats in here. And that's really what you want. You can see it gets a little clumpy. It maybe looks a little scary if you haven't done a cake like this, but that's, that's exactly what we want. So we have the fats in there. And so now we need to worry about all the liquid ingredients and the things that make a cake a cake. So to start, we're gonna talk about eggs. So this is a yellow cake. So we're gonna go heavy for one on eggs, but then we're also gonna make sure to do some just egg yolks. So we're gonna do three whole eggs whole eggs with the yolk and everything. And I always use large eggs. I don't buy jumbo, I don't buy extra large, I don't buy medium, I buy just large. And to me, that's the easiest way to remember what every recipe, and then see once in a while, you get a little bit of that shell in there. Now guys, okay, this is what I heard once, and it does kind of work. Shell sticks to shell best, so there we go. If you put in a little piece of the shell, you get the shell out that fell in better. So I'm gonna separate my eggs. I just have a little bowl here so I can save my whites because you can always think of something to do with the whites. And even if it's just making a meringue for no reason, you can do it. Now, some people love to use the two shells, go back and forth. It looks cleaner, it looks better. I'm gonna be honest, a lot of times what do I like to do? I like to use my hand. 
because your hand to me is an easy way to always know when you're cupping that egg yolk and just kind of watching it and knowing where it's going and making sure you really separate that white out. You do you, you do what works for you, but to me, that's what can work best. But there we have two yolks. So the two extra yolks, one, they're gonna add a richness. Obviously they add some fat. They add some great color too. So this is a yellow cake and you really want that in there. We're gonna just kind of break all these up just so they kind of incorporate into the cake better. I always think it's easier if you can kind of beat them up separately like this, get them going and see how they're just kind of already homogenized a little bit better. You can just see them and see that they're all kind of one liquid. So we have our eggs in there and now we're gonna add one cup of milk. Now I always use whole milk. If I'm baking, if I'm cooking, you don't have to, but the thing is it has more flavor. Fat is a carrier. So if you can use whole milk, that actually carries more flavor, not only with the milk, but with everything else too. So we're mixing that all together. We're gonna add some flavoring more, some vanilla. We're gonna add, bear with me here, two teaspoons of vanilla. Now, vanilla to me is one of those things, you can't over add vanilla. I mean, like don't dump the bottle in, but let's be honest, good vanilla, it adds an amazing ability to just have the best tasting cake. So if you have good vanilla in there, it's gonna make a great cake. So we have that mixed together. And then we have one half cup of sour cream. So sour cream, we know it adds a richness. It adds that wonderful ump, just beautiful umptiousness to a cake. And that's what it's gonna do here. So we're gonna kind of just alternately add these two things with the mixture going on low. About half of the egg mixture with the milk. You can see how that's kind of starting to take those crumbles away, really kind of work in with all that dry ingredients. Then I'm gonna take all of that sour cream. We're just gonna put it right in there. We're gonna scrape out the bowl. I don't like to waste it. That's good sour cream and it's gonna really give a moistness to the cake. It's really gonna help flavor it, kind of offset some of like the other flavors with a little bit of that tang. And then we're gonna add our final amount of the milk and the eggs. So we have all that in there. We're gonna let that work together, let it come together as one, clean up, and then we're gonna have a cake going in the oven here. So this is all mixed up, ready to go. And you see just a few little pieces yet. They're not really lumps, they're little tiny pieces of butter. And that's what I love because as this actually bakes, those little pieces are gonna melt and create these wonderful little pockets of the perfect textured cake. And that's what you want. So I'm cleaning off the beater. You don't usually see this on TV because it's a messy thing. But it's also to me important to know that you clean off the beater. You don't just take it out and leave all that stuff on it. So I have that ready to go. Now we have our nuts. So this takes to me, you need nuts in it. And what I did was I took a cup of pecans, I toasted them in the oven for about 10, 12 minutes until they were like nice and fragrant. And you know how you know when they're toasted? You taste them. If they taste delicious and have that good toasted flavor, you know they're ready. Now if you don't like pecans, you could use a walnut. I think pecans to me are just that iconic coffee cake one. Now grandma didn't always put nuts in it because a lot of either grandkids or great grandkids didn't always like nuts. I think it's just like they need to learn to like them. Unless there's an allergy, then leave them out. But otherwise, they're good. So what we have here is a really well-greased bump pan. This is for a bump pan. So you know it's one of those more vintage recipes. Now I use the baking spray that has flour in it because if you coat it with butter and then flour it, sometimes that flour leaves a coating on the outside of the cake. And to me, with the crumb on this cake, I just don't like that. So before we kind of start pouring it in, we have a half a cup of sugar here, and we're gonna put in a good amount of cinnamon, I mean a tablespoon. Yeah, I said a good amount. And what this is gonna do is kind of create that like underlying flavor inside of that cake. So we're kind of just gonna mix those up. Look at that. Mix them together. So obviously cinnamon sugar, like that's just, like there's no problem with that, whether it's on toast, whether we use it in a coffee cake, it just screams breakfast. Why? I don't know, because we're used to having sugar at breakfast. So we should just have it sparingly, but it really is that good. So we have that mixed together. We're gonna to put in about three quarters, and I'm just gonna eyeball that, of our batter right inside of the bump pan. And see what I do? I turn the bump pan, instead of trying to take my actual mixer bowl around, which you're then gonna spill it, if you just turn your bump pan, you don't. It's much better. I think we should just all like get used to that. So that's pretty much you know, three quarter at least of the batter. I'm gonna put that right there. And then what we're gonna do mm -hmm, is we're gonna take this wonderful topping. We're gonna to kind of just layer it right in here. So as I'm layering it, see 
how it is just kind of not looking great and you're thinking, what's that going to do? Well, what we're going to do is layer it all in here, all of it. And except for about two tablespoons, we're going to put in about all but maybe a quarter cup of the nuts. We're just going to sprinkle those in too, right into that center. And I'm going to leave, like I said, just a quarter cup and those we're going to use more at the end because Anything delicious needs a garnish, I think. So we're gonna keep a few of those nuts more just to add as like a toastiness on top when it's done. And then we're gonna put in the rest of the batter. So this is kind of a layering effect. It's nothing scientific, but what this does, when there's a small amount, I think you can go around easier, but when there's a large amount, you just can't. So what we're doing is, if we just leave all that like streusely kind of topping right there, it tends to wanna to sink. And then it goes all the way to the bottom. And then it sometimes can either want to stick depending on the type of bump pan you're using. So instead what I do is once I kind of scrape all this out, and you can see, I mean all of it, I let you see all the nitty gritty. And we're getting it all right in there. And don't feel bad that it's not like covering all that streusel topping. That actually does not matter. Because what we're going to do is we have all of it right there. We're going to take either a knife or like the back of my tablespoon here. And I'm just going to make figure eights. And what that is going to do is kind of just slightly mix that streusel topping with the actual cake batter, but not so much that it becomes one. It's still gonna give you kind of these ribbons and like swirls. And while it looks ugly on top, we're gonna add in the rest up here. So you kind of get this multi-layer thing. We're gonna just swirl, swirl, look at that. I know when you swirl before you bake, it looks really ugly. And you think, what is this actually doing? But what it is doing is just cutting through the cake and giving you just enough swirl action to make it good. So we're kind of just going around. To me, this already just smells good and looks good. This is it. I'm gonna put it in the oven. We're gonna bake it at 350 degrees in about 45 minutes to an hour. We're gonna have a cake. It's gonna have to cool because we're gonna put a glaze on it. But then after that, we're all gonna be quite happy. The cake has cooled and look how beautiful it comes out. That's why you want to spray it well and make sure you know what you're doing. And you can see it kind of has this marbling effect where you get bits of that sugary, cinnamony, toppingy, kind of just like marble throughout. And that's what you want. I just think it makes it much more fun. So a little quick glaze, nothing magical here, but we have a cup of powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is kind of sometimes a hard thing to say. And I sifted it because when lumps, especially when you're going to make a glaze, if you don't sift it, You'll get those little pieces in there, you'll see them. No one wants that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon, just because I want it, you know, since there's cinnamon inside of it, I want that to be kind of a component here too. Then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. So this is adding some liquid. We don't need to add then as much liquid otherwise. So we add one to two tablespoons. It kind of depends to get the right consistency of milk. And again, I'm just using my whole milk. So we're putting that on there. We're gonna take a whisk and we just gently start whisking it, which this is where with, I say one to two tablespoons of milk because sometimes, you know what? Humidity can make a difference, time of year you're making this, climate you live in. So it sometimes just makes a difference on how much you actually need. So as I'm, look at that, we're getting a glaze pretty quickly, but you can see it's probably not quite a nice pouring consistency yet. It's kind of more of like a royal icing. <laughs> so we're gonna add a little bit more. And that's why you just do little amounts of that extra milk. Because we don't want it so thin that it just kind of goes to nothing. You want it to be the consistency where you can kind of pour it on top and it drizzles down the side. So I like it just thick enough. Look at that. That's perfect. So what I'm going to do, I have this on a rack. And I have a piece of parchment here that I actually used when I sifted my powdered sugar. I just like to do it on a parchment. And then it will kind of catch all the drips. We think of, we have to think of saving ourselves the extra work. So then we'll just take this and we'll kind of just go around and we're going to kind of just try to get it in those crevices. Look at that. And you kind of just let it do its thing. So obviously it's going to drip off of it some. You can kind of, if you want to, just put it up here at the top and then let it kind of just drizzle down as it wants to. And hello, we are gilding the lily. Is this needed? No. But does it kind of finish it off? Yeah. It's just kind of that extra component. I mean, we're not gonna say this is gonna get you like all the nutrition you need for a day, but it sure does get you excited to wake up in the morning and have this ready to go. 
Now, I saved a few of those chopped nuts and what we're gonna do with them is while the glaze is kind of soft because it will harden slightly since it has that powdered sugar and it kind of gets a little bit of a crust on it. So while it's soft like this, I just like to take some of those nuts. Just kind of look at that. Oh, that is, that is picture perfect right there. Now what my grandma would do, she wouldn't do the glaze, honestly. That was more of a me thing. But what she would do once she made this cake, cause she made it for anyone when someone was gonna come over. Like if she knew you were gonna have company, she'd say, hey, do you want a coffee cake? I think that's like the ultimate test of love. And what she would always do is get out her cake carrier and she would take you the cake, the coffee cake in this. She put a little piece of wax paper on the bottom, open it up. So I still think this thing is just magical. All the years of love that was on this. And then she'd bring you out your cake and it would be sitting there. So when you saw this on the counter, you knew, you knew it was gonna be something good. You can let it sit now if you'd want to, but I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna slice right down through it. This is what I love about this cake. It's kind of just like a no brainer cake. It's always good. It's kind of just always one of those simple ones that, you know what? It doesn't take any fussing, no fussing. And look at that. You get the beautiful, streusel nutty. Oh, that looks good. I have my plate here. Let's put it on there. I don't know, it's still slightly warm, but not too much. Not too much, just slightly. Look how that texture is tight and nice and just like pillowy almost. I think grandma would love it. One, all homemade. No box needed. Just as simple and quick, really, because it's ingredients you're gonna have. It is soft, melt in your mouth, but it's structured enough that it holds and gives you that nice kind of marbly, streusel layer throughout there, which I love. It's kind of just a light cake. What I love about this coffee cake is some kids that are, let's just say a little picky, like my niece, Carson, you know I'm talking to you. She can be picky, but guess what? She loves this coffee cake because it's just like a simple, kind of no frills coffee cake that anyone will love. What do I hope you do with this? I hope you try it. I hope you make this, have some people over, whether it's for brunch, for breakfast, or dessert, let's be honest, and just enjoy it. That's what my grandma would want. I think that's what you want too. So share this video around because when you share these, it helps me so much, but it helps everyone else see that this stuff is easy. It's doable. If I can do it, you all can do it and the world will be a more delicious place. Check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe. All of my recipes, they're on there and they can be printed. Until then, enjoy something delicious.